Hi, I'm Wayne from TC Electronics and Marine and what we're planning on doing here is uh, removing the uh, bearing carrier and testing the prop shaft to see if it's uh, out around. Um, there's some impact damage If you can see it from here, I'm going to take this off of the stand. Okay. All right. We we need to remove the bearing carrier because uh, we're going to weld um, in here, and uh, once we weld it, it it'll get kind of hot. Um, uh, but besides that before that what we've done is just put a piece of steel because you as you can see the fin is missing off of it that's what we're going to be welding um, and um, what I'm trying to do here is we have a dial indicator right there and I'm going to turn the I got it in forward gear and I'm going to turn the dry shaft and we're going to see if um, if it's out around or not so okay so it's so that's I think five six seven eight nine almost ten okay so even if I took the bearing carrier out and I repaired it it would wear the new seal out in very little or no time at all almost so when the bearing when the prop shaft is bent that much if it's bent fourth hour less um, you can leave it in the seal can usually make up for it it won't last as long as a new one and as if it was straight but you know four thou seems to be the four or five thou would be the maximum in the industry and then they'd usually change it but in this case, it's double that. It's almost ten thou out around, or maybe even more. Okay, and to make things worse, I'm sure that there's bearing play here of another. Uh, there should be bearing pay, but it shouldn't be like eight thou. It should be just. Um, a couple of thou either way so so there's um, prop damage that we know the prop shaft damage there's definitely prop damage <laughs> and um, and the fin has to be welded here on this particular unit so we're going to show you how to take the bearing carrier out which could be a real treat or it might come out easily um, the reason I say that is it could be indentated and so trying to turn it to get it out may not take place too well. You might have to break it into pieces to get it out. So we're going to find out in a hurry. Um, there's one other thing here just so I don't confuse things. You only use two of these um, seals for the prop shaft. You could use these back to back like that or you could use this one here this this side here would be facing out to the prop and this one here where you see the stainless steel would go to the inside when I say stainless steel I mean the spring okay spring to the inside um, and most people use this it's got an edge on it which I think is supposed to cut the fishing line I can vouch for the fact that it doesn't work because I've seen all kinds of these chewed up with fishing line. And I don't really understand why there's... Maybe somebody's throwing an extra seal in there. I don't really understand why we're getting two of this style. but And possibly some people want the option. They don't, they don't like this type of seal. Anyway, that's, that's the way the one I opened here came. If you're at home, 
and you're thinking about doing this, I mean, one thing you would need would be the dial indicator, which is about 20 bucks on eBay. Um, but you would need a bearing carrier puller, which I believe is about $60, $70, something like that. And you need a, uh, it's called a carrier retainer wrench, number 9190. Unfortunately, I don't know the number for this, but if, <clears throat> if you phone Brian at TC Electronics, if you uh, contact Brian at TC Electronics or look on the website under tools at uh, www.sterndrive.info, that's sterndrive.info instead of .com, it's .info. Um, they have it listed there under tools, uh, all of these items. Okay. Um, so we're not going to require this anymore. So I'm just going to take this away. And we're not going to require that anymore either. And you obviously need to, uh, in order to take the bearing carrier out, you need to remove the prop. Okay. Now, first thing you're going to need in order to take this out, okay, is um, this little tab here. Okay. There's a, there'll be a tab that stops it from stops the nut from turning. And you need to uh, just tap that down so that we can turn the nut. So that would be the tab there straightened out. Um, once you do that, we would um, put this tool on and it's got pins here. And what happens is the pins lock into the bottom there. I think it's an inch and a sixteenth. I'm not positive. Uh, we keep changing it. Right, so you'll need a wrench to go on there. Uh, you may also want to put some WD-40 or a facsimile on there prior to. Um, I mean, also, you could soak the bottom in cases where there's a lot of calcium uh, so that you don't break the uh, bearing carrier and so that it comes out easier. You might want to soak it in some vinegar. Just get a pail or bucket of somehow or other and just fill it up with um, with vinegar from the grocery store and uh, let it leave it there um, you know for about 24 hour period and let it dissolve the calcium away okay so that um, what we've what we've done is um, we put the unit on here and I've used some impact uh, and it won't budge so what I'm planning on doing next is just heating the outside of the case up uh, with a torch to see if four or five thou clearance um, will um, will let this uh, cover nut uh, turn. Sometimes by heating up the um, surface around here. The four or five thou might might give us enough to turn. Uh, if that doesn't work, then we just drill two holes and collapse the cover nut, um, which maybe sounds like a lot of work, but it takes about two minutes. But um, first, first I'm going to heat it up and uh, try to um, to um, get it out. And that way, you can save the twenty bucks because if we drill two holes. Um, we would drill a hole in the center there and the center here and then it would just collapse down together you can take it out that way um, but you know you don't have to put much labor into it and you're you're out 20 bucks too so but just the same I'm gonna try and heat it up with the torch and see if it'll come out that way okay so what we're doing is we're gonna heat the outside all the way around takes about five minutes or so until it gets reasonably hot. 
You don't have to use this torch. You can use the one used for um, plumbing, small plumber's torch or something like that. Whatever, whatever works. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera off for a minute, and um, this is going to take about five. About four or five minutes to uh, heat the whole area up here. So we heated it up all the way around the outside here and it wouldn't budge. Um, there's a good chance that the um, integrity of the um, structure here is possibly damaged. Um, but I've got nothing to lose here so I'm just going to pull this uh, cover nut off and uh, give it a shot. So we put a center pop there, center pop over on the other side, and we're going to drill a hole. It's got to go through about a half inch. And you're going to know when you hit the bottom, but you just keep taking it in and out till it's about a half inch. But you will end up um, hitting what they call a tab washer. And the tab washer is made out of uh, stainless steel and it's underneath the um, cover nut. So you, you'll be able to feel it uh, as you're drilling because the um, it may drill through the um, aluminum very easy but once you hit the stainless it's a different story. So, But after you hit the stainless you don't need to go any further. We're going to stop there. So. That's it, I can feel it. We've, we've hit it already. So, didn't take very long. Again, you do both sides and then we're going to collapse it down. Um, after this pilot hole, you put a larger uh, bit in. Okay, so that's our hole there. We drilled a 13, 30 second hole. And you just need to get it to so that it just touches the outside thread area so that we can collapse it. And you would just take a screwdriver or a punch. Got to put the camera down to do this. And just give this a touch tap there and it should break it loose. Okay, so you can see I, I just pushed it forward and it, um, it came loose fairly easy. It um, may even uh, well, I guess that would be wishful thinking. I was going to say it may even turn out of there. It does move a little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to do is get um, I'm just going to tap it on this side too here. Claps it down on this okay. side. So that, uh, that should seal off the air. And then what I'm going to do is um, at the cone down here, you'll see there's an oil port there. And we have um, we've made a, um, a unit here. It's a snap-on uh, pressure tester kit for a uh, radiator and we've just put an oil fill. These are for, um, you can get them for filling it, filling your unit up with oil. And this is the, the fitting that comes with it. And so we're just going to screw it in the bottom um, and bring it up to 40-50 pounds after I, um, after I put the um, bearing carrier puller on it. And the, for those of you who have never seen a bearing carrier puller, it would look something like this. Well, I guess it would look exactly like this.
never know. Um, you know, some of these, um, they look terrible. They come out easy. Other ones look in good shape like this one does. And because there's structural damage, it may not come out at all. Okay, this should be a little easier. I'll put it in the carrier. Um, there we go. Comes out. Probably looks harder than it is. You don't want to um, you want to pry it against the threads. So when you're taking this out, you, you want to be mindful of the threads that are inside here. So okay, and this is the um, tab washer. Um, as you can see, I drilled a little bit too deep there. This was the right amount on this side. Not the end of the world. We're just going to replace it. I think they're three or four dollars. I've been fired before. No problem. Okay, then the next one that we're going to do is a problem, possibly. I'm, I'm not sure this bearing carrier is going to come out in one piece. Um, we're going to find out. <coughs> What we're going to do is um, we're going to pressurize the unit 40 50 pounds put a bearing carrier puller on this piece here and possibly heat it with a torch to bring the bearing carrier out at this point though i mean if the if it's yours you have nothing to lose by taking it all apart anyway but by the time you change the bearing carrier for a hundred and I think it's about 140 bucks you put a new seal kit in it and you change the prop shaft for 250 you do the welding on the bottom here for about 125 it starts to get to the point where it's not worth it because you can buy an entire lower unit for I believe around 130 uh, about thirteen hundred dollars but if if it's yours um, and you just say pulling the bearing carrier out to change the seal because it has fishing line that's that's a different story if, if your prop shaft is not bent and doesn't need to be welded here and um, my guess is that this being a newer unit this would come out fairly easy if there wasn't structural damage pushing pushing the lower part up against the bearing carrier so anyway well I'll add some pressure to it um, and if you are adding pressure to it you need to plug the hole on the top of this I'm just gonna flip it up here just, I'll just show you there okay so this is the porthole I'm just going to put a piece of aluminum over it and, uh, and a clamp like that, clamp it down. Okay, I've still got this quad thing there with the gasket compound on, holding it down. So I'm just going to put a C-clamp on there and that should hold it. Okay, so I got about 25 pounds here and the bearing carrier and the screwdrivers are to make the bearing carrier uh, just to stop it from slipping off the corner edge there okay I can hear the the air moving so what that basically means is I've lost my air to pressurize it out but it, that also means that the bearing carrier has moved about a quarter of an inch which means it should come out And it's coming out without breaking it 
So what that means is that basically that it's probably round. Uh, so the damage hasn't been done here so that I will be able to weld it and probably reuse this uh, I'll be able to reuse the bearing carrier and uh, Should should be no problem putting it back together That's not always the case um, Quite often um, you have to break break this area here break this by drilling and break actually break the bearing carrier on the outside here and then push the shaft sideways from side to side uh, and put 60 pounds or 80 pounds of air in in the uh, behind it in the case just just to pop it out but that would be say one that was really really corroded you know that would be your worst scenario Nevertheless, it, it takes a bit of work to um, to take these out. Okay, so you just there we go. Okay, and that pulls out. I'm gonna have a look inside the case here. I don't know why it didn't come out. Okay, there's, you can see where I've gone just a little bit deep, taken a little bit out of there, and a little bit out of that side of the case when I was drilling as well. And what we will do is we will wire brush the inside of this thread area, but that small amount will not affect, um, will not affect us screwing a new one in. So, uh, the reason I guess we couldn't get it out is probably the calcium buildup on it. If you left it overnight in a container of um, vinegar, acetic acid, um, it, we might have had better results. But, you know, it's probably $40 worth of vinegar. Uh, or a $17 cover nut. I'm not sure which one's worse. Anyway, that so that would be it for that. Then we would... Um, you could do two things. In, in my case, I'm gonna... We're gonna reach down there and we have a tool that goes in and just... You could use a socket, possibly. It just catches the uh, bearing and pushes the bearing and the two seals out so that you can change the bearing it's an 11 410 bearing it's uh, I think nine dollars and sixty cents so it's a fairly inexpensive bearing and in this case the bearing had about ten thou of play and it should only have two or three so absolutely we would have to change the bearing okay but that's basically um, how you would take um, take it out and down in here I'm not sure if you can see it I can't seem to grab it with my hand but there's an o-ring that we need to take out down in there okay. Right, and you would have to clean up the inside of this wire brush the inside um, there's a scotch bright um, material if you're pulling in my in our case we're gonna pull the uh, the prop shaft because it's all bent so we're gonna pull a prop shaft out and probably put a maybe a used one or possibly a new one in I'm not sure um, and also you need to worry about when you're taking these apart is okay well structural damage did that and it bent the prop shaft you know if there is possible that that it fractured the gears inside so you know just because the case you know overall looks in pretty good condition that doesn't mean the inside is so anyway that's how you get your um, so if you were just pulling this apart for the purposes of um, changing the seal here because the seal had been all chewed up 
and was leaking because of fishing line which is happens a lot you would just pull the seal out um, normally you get a socket and you push the bearing from the back but you don't need to you can you can just uh, you can put yourself a screwdriver under here and just pop it out that way there is a seal pull an actual seal puller that they sell it's a little bit easier to take out for cars it's a cheap tool it's about eight dollars it's sold at most of the automotive places I don't have one here because I always change the bearing I always just knock out the bearing but you know if your bearing on your bearing carrier is okay and you just have uh, just want to change the seals it's no big deal thanks for watching uh, could you if you need any parts or what um, it would be um, all of these tools are sold by TC Electronics and Marine and that would be their website is www.sterndrive.info that's the wrench for, that we didn't use by the way but we will, will need it to put it back together um, okay if you need to replace the tab washer when you take it apart if you have to drill a hole it's number 11381 and if you um, need a new cover nut like we absolutely will in this case it's number 21120 uh, if you have any other questions or need tech help uh, just phone the order desk at uh, TC Electronics and Marine and ask for the tech service number Thanks for watching.